Right, so this week's extended episode is going to be a little bit different, isn't it, Stephen? It is. It is going to be a little bit different. Right. Because I was reading the paper the other day. Hey, hey. And the MSP, Mr. Murdo Fraser. Mr. Murdo Fraser, hello. Yes, You're watching. yes. He's claiming that he's, he wants to continue the, the fight to return the Stone of Destiny back to its, what he believes, rightful... Well, it's, it's, it's the rightful place, isn't it? I was trying to be diplomatic there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> diplomatic. Get it back get in Schoon. The Stone of Destiny belongs in Schoon. Yeah, not Edinburgh Castle. And not basically. Edinburgh Castle where it is. Yeah. And so for you, those of you watching, Stone of Destiny, you're probably thinking, I'm going to ask what you're probably thinking. So Stephen, what is it? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. <laughs> well, the Honours of Scotland and the Stone of Destiny were both used throughout history in the crowning of Scottish, English and British monarchs. In 1292, John Balliol was the last king to use the Stone of Destiny. In 1296, it was captured by Edward I of England and taken to Westminster Abbey in London. It sat under the coronation chair where English and British sovereigns sit during their coronation for 700 years. On Christmas Day 1950, four nationalist Scottish students removed the stone from Westminster Abbey and brought it back to Scotland. After a public outcry, it was found a few months later at Arbroath Abbey, draped in a saltire and taken back to Westminster Abbey by the police. And it was later used at the coronation of Her, of Her Majesty the Queen in 1953. On St Andrew's Day 1996, the Stone of Destiny was returned to Scotland amid much ceremony and celebration and put in Edinburgh Castle alongside the Honours of Scotland. It's like really, isn't it? It is, it is. What's it? It's quite big, it's 152 kilograms. That's a big boy, that one. However, four students managed to lift it. And we are better fed than... And we are better fed. We've had more porridge than these Scottish students. Uh, at least worth... I was going to say worth two students. Uh, one and a half, maybe. Yeah. Maybe we need to do some training. Yeah. Do you think we could lift it? 152 kilo. Well, it obviously took four of them. I'm guessing they took a corner each. Yeah. I mean, so. if it was a fixed weight and you were lifting a bar, we could lift 152 kilograms, easy enough. Yeah, yeah. But it's not a bar. It's not a it's bar. It's a stone. It's a pretty long way to carry it. So, I mean, <laughs> fundamentally... <laughs> you think about just bringing it back to well, Perth? That's, that's that's I'm going gonna, gonna to bring that back to Perth. Well, the thing is, when I read the article, it said, return the stone. Well... That doesn't sound to me like you're gonna, you know, if you return a videotape. <laughs> That's one <laughs> school. You, <laughs> you return the videotape, you know, with like bare the, hands. Uh, just back. I'm gonna go and return some videotapes. But really, what it means is we're gonna transport it, we're gonna transport, use some yeah. cranes, we're gonna lift it onto a flatbed truck, and we're gonna really? transport it back to Perth. That's what these, these guys mean. No, 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 no. I thought we were gonna carry but it back. We to Perth. are gonna yeah. carry it. Yeah. So we, well, I think we'll need to learn a little bit about. How to, how, how to actually lift a stone of yeah. 152 kilograms. So I think we'd better go and speak to the experts. Let's speak to the experts. The experts. The experts. The experts. <laughs> Do you know any experts? I know one. Yeah? Oh yes, he's, he's twice the man we are. In he's, every dimension. Well, in that case, he's the man for us. Yeah. More sausage. Right, so we're speaking to the guy here who's former Scotland's strongest man and he's actually got the record for the heaviest stone lift. So we're needing some advice here about possibly lifting a stone. What can you tell us? Well, I think uh, the, the, the main thing to remember about lifting any sort of atlas stone or, or natural stone is it's a whole body movement. Uh, uh, it's not just a case of lifting it with arms. Um, you're, you're obviously going to pick the stone off the floor and it's a case of resting it on the quads, arms over the top, really just using the arms to anchor the weight to your body. And today we're going to really show you how to really get the most out of the momentum with legs, with quads, with glutes, with hips. Uh, stones is fantastic. It's an all-over body event. It's becoming really popular with women and you don't have to be you know, the strongest man in the country to enjoy training stones. There's a lot of benefit to training stones. It's uh, as an all-over body workout, a stone session. Well, the stone we have in mind is 152 kilos. What's the record you've got? What's your stone? Uh, my stone was just shy of 500 pounds, so it was around about 212 kilograms. But it Whoa. was it was uh, it was a round a round stone, so it makes it a wee bit harder to grab. Right. The natural stones that you're speaking about, you know, they've got edges and stuff like that. So one 150 is actually relatively light to us. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, Great, and you're saying that's obviously a full body exercise because I'm thinking, mm. you know, how can we lift a stone? I mean, let's, let's face it, we're not the biggest of guys I here, know, so uh, yeah. you know, you're saying it's a full body, so that's good news for us. Well, the thing is, we, we Atlas stones, um, unfortunately, I've just lost a bicep to an Atlas <laughs> stone lift <laughs> uh, <laughs> at, the, at the Scottish Strongest Man qualifier. I tore, uh, I, I ruptured my, my tendon. Luckily, I've had the, the operation and it's back on and um, it's good to go. So, basically, you know, I've been lifting stones for about nine years, but you have to give them respect. You have to respect anything in Strongman, you know, it's heavy stuff. But I will say, with, with stones, brute strength helps, but there's a lot to be said for the proper technique and form. Well, I've been throwing stones for 32 years. Do you think that I could manage a... 152 stone. <laughs> I think your stones will be all right, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll be fine. Aye. We'll give this a go then. We'll, Aye, we'll have to give some events Aye. a try, and Aye. we'll see how strong we are. Fine. How was that? Good player. Bloody tough. <laughs> With his lower back and legs onto the quad, sit down with it, Paul, hands over the top and then tight to the chest, and he's going to lift it up with the hamstrings, drive through with the hips and the, the glutes, and over. You're, you're much more likely to, to lift it with a full range of motion, you know. <laughs> so it looks like we've got our work cut out for us. I mean, that's, that's going to be tough work, right? That's going to be tough. Yeah, we've got a bit more training so, to do. A little bit of training if we want to just take that stone. We, between the two of us, we could just carry that and bring it back yeah. to Perth. Or we could put all our effort into helping Mr. Fraser. We should. We should help Myrtle Fraser get that stone back into Perth, where it belongs. So if you agree, Leave a comment in the box. Yeah, yeah. Drop us a comment. 
uh, on this video and let us know if you think that the stone belongs in Schoon rather than Edinburgh Castle.